Hey guys, Nick Shaman from Showtime Strength. Today what we're going to talk about is how to begin a conjugate training plan. All right, so this is geared towards beginners to intermediate or anybody that, you know, hasn't really had any experience with a conjugate plan. Maybe you've been doing linear, maybe you're doing some block, maybe you haven't really, you know, just doing some basic bodybuilding, which is not a bad way to start. All right, but... Uh, so this is just conjugate for beginners, all right? And these are just some basic guidelines I would recommend to people um, as somebody who's been through the system, brought people into it, um, taught them how to implement it for themselves and others. This is what I've seen work, all right? So let's talk about, you know, what do you need, all right? So everyone starting out, and this never goes away, All right, strength and muscle. All right, without those two things, um, the program doesn't really matter. So how are we gonna address strength? How are we gonna address muscle size? So this, your strength, think of those as the main lifts, uh, muscle size, accessories, all right? And we can sort of manipulate those as we see fit when beginning, you know, and it also depends if you wanna compete, don't wanna compete. Um, but for strength, so let's say your main movement is a deadlift. Um, maybe what we do is work up to a heavy set of five. All right, then add, you know, we'll say five to 10%, heavy three. All right, so if you're doing this conventional, so you're working up to heavy five, let's say you're Heavy set of five is 315, and then you know, you get five pretty easily. Um, you add 10 percent, so you're talking about roughly 350 pounds for three. And then, what we've done before, so these are conventional deadlifts. Maybe now we'll go sumo one to two sets, um, eight to 12 reps. All right, and you can do those you know moderate weight it should be challenging it shouldn't be you know super easy but just working different muscles um, working a different technique and then we get into accessories and this is where we're going to push the volume a little bit more so we might go ghr back extension first hypers so we'll say two to four sets on each exercise um, GHR, 10 to 15 reps. Back extension, 10 to 15 reps. Hypers, uh, 10 to 30 reps. So I generally like to keep the hypers in a higher rep range, all right? And that all depends on your skill level, your training level, all right? No problem there. Um, then finish the workout, upper back and abs. All right, and again, two to four sets of that. And that's a pretty standard lower body workout. So let's look at how that would work on an upper body workout. So let's say you're benching. Bench with chains. All right, up to a heavy five. On upper body, I would only go up like 5%, all right? Uh, you're not making the same jumps for upper body that you would on lower. So let's say add 5%, heavy three. So if on these, let's say you're using a comp grip, let's do one to two sets after, um, and you can change the grip to either close or wide. So close, like right in on the knurling, or wide, you can you know even go beyond competition grip. So beyond that finger, uh, index finger on the power ring. And let's go like 10 to 20 reps, all right? And if you wanna get a little more specific, let's go two to three board, all right? Um, I really, when I was competing, I really liked and felt like I got a lot out of doing high rep um, board presses, you know, with varying grips as a back off after my main lift. So again, so now we'll go, um, into our accessories, you know, so building the muscle, dumbbell bench, 
Um, then maybe we will do rollbacks with that. Then maybe some face pulls for some upper back. Uh, so same thing, let's go two to four sets. Dumbbell bench, let's work out to a heavy 15. Keep the rollbacks at 15. Face pulls, I'd go like 25. All right, then band push downs, side raise, and some more abs. All right, one to three sets there. And again, this is just volume staying high. So, you know, in all of these, you can go sets of 20 to 30 reps. All right, and really force the blood in there. That's also gonna help aid in the recovery process. All right, and I know for beginners, some people might say, you know, stay away from accommodating resistance. If you're a beginner, I would say, add it sooner than later and i'd actually start with bands before chains so a lot of people will start with chains and then switch to bands um, use the bands as a beginning teaching tool reason being um, with chains it's not stable so you know you get the almost swinging effect you don't want the chains off the ground but it's still going to be you know waving back and forth with the bands it's actually going to teach you it's going to make you create tension so when you stand a squat bar and it could be something as simple as like choking a red mini band onto a squat bar just enough to elicit a feedback response all right so you stand the bar up you're going to feel that instant tension it's going to make you think okay i gotta get tight or i'm going to get slingshotted down to the ground so feel free to use accommodating resistance. Just I think people can get away with a lot less accommodating resistance and then working their way into more accommodating resistance. So as you, and then as you um, progress into your training, you know, you can experiment. Everyone's gonna have, it's gonna be different for everyone. So really you gotta figure out what's working best for you. Some people will get a lot out of bands. Some people will feel like they get more out of chains. I know. Bands um, throughout the year really helped me get really strong, like heavy band tension. And then as meets, you know, we started getting closer to meets, I would actually switch to chains and then throw in some um, straight weight squat waves to feel the real weight and get rid of that grounding effect. So then you would need to think about exercise selection, all right? If you're a beginner, I would keep it very basic. Maybe five to eight movements on your main exercise. So let's just use a bench press, for example. Um, I'll use some of the ones that I find to be a staple. So comp bench. And that just means using whatever grip you use in a competition. Close grip bench. Two board bench, floor press, um, bench with bands. How many we got there? That's five. Then go one board. Bench with chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven exercises. And then, so here's what's awesome. Um, as a beginner, you can hit a five rep max on these. You can also find a three rep max and then a one rep max. So right there, just off those, you have 21 weeks of bench training. So a half year of bench press training for your max effort days. That's how easy it can be. And then what you'll do is just rotate back through and your goal is to hit a five pound PR, all right? Now five pound PR is not real sexy, but you gotta think longevity. If you hit a five pound PR, let's say three, four times a year. So that's 20 pounds on each of these lists throughout the year. You do that for 10 years, you're 
two board press just went up 200 pounds. Your one board press just went up 200 pounds. Your competition bench went up 200 pounds. So if you're benching 300, you know, and then you get your bench up to 500, that's a huge increase, All right? So let's talk about exercise selection for lower body. All right, just a standing good morning, uh, deadlift, weight on mats, low box squat, deadlift with bands, suspended good morning, three, five, front squat, And one, two, three, cool. All right, so you got a few good morning variations, a few low box, and a few deadlift variations. So just a standing good morning. And again, on, even on these, you can, you know, find a five rep max, find a three rep max, and find a one rep max. Um, and again, that's going to give you 20 20 ish weeks of max effort training. You know, so. While this doesn't look like that many cool variations of these exercises, and again, these are not exercises that you have to use. This is just the ones I find a ton of value in off the top of my head. You know, what you need is dependent on you as a lifter and your experience. Um, but same thing with the good mornings. Maybe we go, you know, a conventional stance on our heavy sets and then go wide for some rep sets as a back off. Deadlift, you know, pull sumo um, for your work sets and then maybe do a couple sets with your stance in conventional. What that's doing is it's building different muscles, eliminating any weaknesses. Um, when I was at my strongest, my deadlift, and I know this was true for many of the guys I trained with at the left side, many of our deadlifts, I'd say we're within 50 pounds of one another. It wasn't like we couldn't do one, you know, or the other. We try to be strong at every movement possible. So let's talk about exercise selection on accessories. So again, when we're talking about accessories, so just think hypertrophy. So these are the exercises that build main lifts or build, you know, so these are building the main lifts. Your max effort exercises are the lifts building the competition lifts, if that makes sense. And then you can trickle down further and find the exercises that are gonna push these. All right, so that, you know, getting into single joint movements. So let's look at uh, upper body. All right, so here's like a simple way I'll rotate um, dumbbell bench press as my main accessory on upper body day. So let's go uh, dumbbell flat, dumbbell incline the next week, dumbbell decline or overhead press, floor press. All right, then we can go, and we can work in rep ranges of 15, 12, 10, 8, whatever works, you know, again, just figuring out where you're at. Um, then what we can do is go dumbbell flat with bands, dumbbell incline with band, uh, let's say, so let's go overhead in here, floor press, with band. All right, so that's an easy rotation. And then also there's, you know, if you chose to, um, you can control the tempo. And you can do that a few different ways. Um, sometimes we'd say, all right, go 30 seconds. Press those dumbbells for 30 seconds all out. All right, try to get 30 reps. Um, another way you can go one second ice on the bottom, so bring it down, pause, explode up. Bring it down, pause, explode up. So right there you got eight weeks of your accessories planned out. 
And then if you, again, rotate through finding your top set of 15, top set of 12, top set of 10, now you're at uh, about 20 to 25 weeks of dumbbell accessories. All right, so again, just keeping it really basic. You don't have to reinvent the wheel on accessories. So then we have to find, you know, how do we rotate the other exercises? How do we rotate for, you know, our rat, uh, lats? So let's go one dumbbell row, underhand dumbbell row, overhand dumbbell row. All right, so I think those are all with, you know, one, one dumbbell. So then we're gonna go like a chest supported, uh, neutral grip dumbbell row, incline uh, um, underhand row, then overhand incline dumbbell row, then a half static. So when I say half static, that means pull one up, hold, do your reps, pull the other one up, do your reps there. So again, you got like half a year. And on these, I'd stay in that 10 to 15 range. All right, but don't be afraid to push the rows. The rows need to get heavy. Um, the heavier you can row, the stronger your back's gonna get, stronger your back's gonna get, bigger your bench is gonna be. So then you just, you can pair these with something for uh, rear delt. So rear delt flies with dumbbells, band reverse fly, Face pulls, um, prone face pulls, pull apart, rope face pulls, All right, external rotation exercises. All right, and we'll throw in shrugs there, and then just arms. We don't need to cover how to do arms. All right, just get a lot of blood in that area, into your arms, take up a larger surface area. All right, so this is the first part of this video series. We're gonna do about three to four more parts and really break it down for those trying to begin on a conjugate training system. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below.